So hello everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. My name is Riitta Jönperä and I'm working as Director of Collections Management at the Finnish National Gallery. And I've been involved in this organization in our open data policy. We have taken from the very beginning, which uh, is to say since 2012, to give you some facts. So we are the biggest art museum organization in Finland with the National Gallery. And we are three museums, but we're one collection. And now when we're talking about the whole collection, but mostly what I'm talking about is um, uh, data connected with the artworks in our collection, but also archival material. And the, the set is a moment about um, 42,000, 42, and more than half of that is basically copyright free. So that is the amount of artworks or, or data connected to those artworks. The sort of preconditions are a very active uh, digitizing policy in Finland on a national level, and the Finnish National Gallery was part of this since 28. And this has been run and, and also funded by the Finnish Ministry of Culture. My organization as a national gallery has done is very much connected to, to the national policies. But also, of course, as we can see, because this is sort of this is a case study. So I'm going to tell you very shortly what happened. So uh, together with the digitizing, we have been sharing our, um, well, let's say early on, if 2007 is early on. So we, we opened a website, which has nothing to do with sort of open access in the, in the meaning, but we're talking about it today. We have a national um, online service called Finna and uh, also Europeana was part of the policy from its very beginning. So when Europea started launching its, uh, its pilots, it's not about open access policy, actually. This is about um, making the collection data seen. What happened in 2012 is sort of the, the beginning of the, the actual story. And um, we were contacted by some open glam activists and Wikimedia activists. Uh, Douglas was talking about earlier, so we're talking about the sort of European uh, sector of open glam uh, activists and agents who also in Finland through official channels like the Ministry of Culture who has been guiding our work, but who have acti actively contacted us and sort of actively persuaded also the Finnish National Gallery to take new actions. And in 2012, um, I got the permission from the director general of my organization to sort of take the first step, which means that we had digitized archival materials like photographs, and we would proceed to share a set of these archival materials online. And we chose to use the CC BY SA 3.0 uh, license. We tried a little bit to present and make this material usable. It was not a very big thing, but it was the beginning. Next year, the, one of our museums, the Museum of Contemporary Art, Kiasma, took an initial um, with Open Knowledge Finland Association. And um, there was an Apps for Finland uh, competition that fall the Kiasma uh, agents participated there. And this was the point where we created an API for the collections data, but not photographs. For the, for the metadata, which was all already shared on our own collections website. So this was clearly a step forward. The data was not good. It was not, I mean, 
it was not organized, it was not clear enough. So in fact, this, this was a step, but it did not um, end up in too much in uh, when we think of uh, other, other partners outside our museum really using the data. But that was something. This was just to show that we opened the API on the, on the website. And then we evaluated what had happened. And really, we talked about the quality of the data and the pilots in order to proceed towards more open licenses and sort of to get forward with this policy, which was not a very sort of um, official policy. It was sort of growing a little bit here and there. So, but anyway, 2016 was the year when we first shared uh, images of artworks. A museum like ours very often think of images of artworks as something that we can earn money with by selling them. Um, in fact, we still do, but, but anyway, we chose about 50 images from the oldest part of our collection and we shared them in the Flickr application. This is just to show that uh, social media was active already, of course, at that time. And we tried to present and sort of make it interesting for our audiences via social media to show, use the images that were license, CC license and not only look at them. Europeana to Egypt it was a project that was sort of launched to us via the Finnish Ministry of Culture. And uh, so we, like other the 28 European countries, chose um, images of Finnish artworks from our collections, and they were shared then on this platform uh, in the context of this Europeana to AG project. So this was also one initial to, to get forward. And here, Europeana via the ministry was the, the party to, to sort of push it forward. Then we're sort of proceeding the, I, of course, I don't want to say it's an end because it's not supposed to be an end, but, but something which sort of was a bigger, a more crucial step to take. Now, first of all, of course, like I think all museums and at least art museums have been looking up to Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam and Staten's Museum for Kunst in Copenhagen as sort of benchmarks for how open access image sharing, especially considering artwork images, is sort of supposed to look like in our present world and in the future. But we had a two-way process. We have a, a program in our museum. We can send our uh, professionals abroad for two months to work as, in, in, as a residency. Um, visitors in organizations. And uh, so we had the chance of sending one of our professionals to the Europeana office. And um, the initiative then from Europeana was that we would upgrade the collections data in Europeana, which means more um, bigger, bigger JPG images of the artworks whose metadata was already there. So this was the point where the very important discussions were happening inside our own organization. So because of this, not say maybe offer, but this question that was really posed to us, would this be the time for you really to take the step to open the uh, artwork images uh, with an open license? So in fact, very long discussions within our organization, the decision was finally taken and somebody has um, asked sometimes that what is the most difficult thing to, to go through when you try to open up and then to share the, the material uh, 
CC or otherwise licensed. So I would almost say that it is to take the decision to sort of decide that there are many things which we can win if we do what we then decided to do. So in February 15th last year, we launched uh, around uh, 12,000 images. And we had decided to choose the CC0 license. And why is that? Our benchmarks had done the same. That was one thing. Also, we know that there's no way of controlling the requirements. So we cannot check, we cannot control, nobody can. So why not let go and just relax in that respect. And of course, the expectation then after the decision was International Gallery's public image uh, would uh, become even more uh, visible, more stronger. And, and also there was an idea that uh, taking this step is a way to evoke interest and also in that way to get more visitors. Uh, in the museum, actual visitors. In social media, the reaction was immediate and very positive. So the, um, uh, the, the social media hits had the best coverage of the year. Uh, in that way, maybe it's not exaggerating to say that the open access policy really responded to our audiences needs and expectations. And that was, of course, very nice to see. So what, we do, what we did we learn? Um, the effects. Uh, one very important effect, of course, was to enforce our international co collaboration also via Europeana, which was a very important uh, partner here. Uh, Another lesson learned was maybe that there was no harm done. I mean, we have not faced any negative response. So it was not dangerous in the end to our organization. <laughs> uh, so at this point, it, it also almost feels like that opening, so following this, this path is sort of business as usual in an organization like us. Our limitation is that so far we don't share high-resolution res high images um, freely. The discussion deals with the positive economic effects, whether they might be negative or positive. So we're working on, on that. This was just to show what happened then within Europeana. So while our uh, professional was working there, so already we could uh, have a very nice chance to share an uh, uh, exhibition online where our collections were well presented. So, and now I was talking about our own collections website or uh, earlier shared our data. So just to let you know that we just last week opened a new one. It's still being sort of developed. And, and this is now, uh, together with Europeana, the place where you can download the, the image and see the, the sort of indication when you open the, the files of each artwork. So why open access? Of course, partly because our collections belong to the Finnish people and they are part of our common European cultural heritage. So we want to guarantee open access, but also encourage participation in allowing creations and discoveries among larger audiences than before. We still think that active and innovative online presence activate pot potential visitors. Of course, when you open CC0, so the, the idea is that you actually don't know what's happening, who's using the images and what's happening there. But what we do know is that uh, students and teachers are using the material and they've been glad to sort of face the new situation. Of course, we want to enable the use of our collections data in creative software technologies. 
and sort of the the overall impact of this kind of policy because uh, I think and I think we think that uh, supporting open societies sort of is one of the targets also of enabling easy and free access to our common heritage. So this is a sort of uh, ideological statement in the end. This is an autumn image from our collections, one of the images that we share CC0. Please be free to, to use the images that we share the, however you, you want to. Thank you very much. Thank you.